Today we are looking at a part 107 test question that will teach you how to read TAFs and METARs. Okay, so I'm back with another part 107 test prep question of the week. And today we are looking at weather tools. Specifically, we're looking at how to read a TAF. So stick around if you don't understand how to read TAFs and METARs. METARs rather, because uh, this one walks through not just a specific question, but it also walks through the codes that go along with TAFs and METARs. Do me a favor and give me a like real quick, and if you don't mind, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Um, I put out videos like this every single week that are educational and will help you understand how to pass the Part 107 test. And this specific one is from the KOKC airport identifier. Now the question is, in the TAF from KOKC, the clear sky becomes overcast at 2,000 feet during the forecast period between 2,200 Zulu and 2,400 Zulu, overcast at 200 feet with the probability of becoming overcast at 400 feet during the forecast period between 2,200 and 2,400 Zulu, or overcast at 200 feet with a 40% probability of becoming overcast at 600 feet during the forecast period between 22 and 2400 Zulu. So first, before I get to any of these answers, I'm just going to walk through each section of the TAF so that you have an understanding of what all of the different symbols mean and the order in which they come. This one is for the KOKC airport identifier, and those four letters are just associated with um, an actual airport or a station identifier. Each airport has its own four-letter code, and that's the four-letter code for the airport in this question. Before we actually get to the the meat of the actual TAF, it's important to know that when different weather conditions are being reported in a TAF, the way that it's going to be laid out is always going to be the date and time that the TAF is valid, wind direction and speed, visibility, anything related to a specific weather condition, and then anything dealing with clouds. Sometimes any one of those pieces of information can be taken out, but when they're all seen together, as you'll see, they always come in that order. That's a helpful thing to remember. I don't have a special acronym for that, but it is helpful to remember that starting out. Okay, so this first section of numbers and letters indicates, the first two indicate the date. So on the 5th, starting at 11.30 Zulu, this TAF will be valid. So Zulu stands for, Zulu is just universal coordinated time. Um, it's based off of the zero prime meridian line in Greenwich, England. Um, it's called Zulu time, and it is the standard time that is used in aviation. So when you see METARs and TAFs, they'll always be measured in Zulu time. It's, and it's important to know that because... Zulu time is not necessarily your local time. In fact, it's probably not your local time. So it's important to know that Zulu time is different than your local time. For our purposes here, we don't really need to know what Zulu time is in relation to what time zone you're in. Um, it's just important to know that, that Zulu time is used and that some of these indications will show times and dates and they're all in Zulu time. So that's what that first part means. That's the beginning of the validity of this TAF. This next section indicates that the weather conditions following are valid on the 5th from 1200 Zulu to the 6th at 1800 Zulu. This is where you'll start seeing the, the pattern of wind direction and speed, then visibility, then specific weather conditions, then cloud layers and descriptions. So here, this first one is wind direction and speed. The first three letters or numbers rather, 140 indicate the wind direction, 08 indicates the wind speed, so it's wind at 140 at 8 knots. 5SM is the visibility, that's 5 statute miles of visibility. BR is describing a specific weather condition, here it describes mist. This is one of those abbreviations, I don't know who came up with it, but BR is the abbreviation for mist, so that's what we're, we're going to go with. The next part of the description is talking about the clouds, and it's saying that there is a broken layer of clouds at 3,000 feet. You know that it's 3,000 feet because it says 030. Whenever you're reading the cloud layers, you knock off the last two zeros. So if I were to add two zeros onto that, it would be 3,000 feet. 
tempo means that there's a weather condition that's quickly changing, and so for the time period of the 5th at 1300 Zulu to the 5th at 1600 Zulu, they expect the following conditions. Again, statute miles, so we know that it's a mile and a half of, of statute miles of visibility. The BR, again, is missed, so it still follows that same pattern, visibility, then specific weather condition. The next set of letters indicates that from the 5th at 1600 Zulu, you can expect the following conditions. Again, we're following that same pattern. Starts with air, where wind direction and speed. Wind direction is at 180, which is directly south, at 10 knots. Next, we're going to visibility again. The P in front of this just indicates that it's the greatest that it can be. It's more than is measurable. So here, the most they would give you is six statute miles of visibility. So this is saying that there is more than six statute miles of visibility. The SKC indicates that there are clear skies. Then we're back to a specific time or date and time period. And so it says that it's becoming on the 5th at 2200 Zulu to the 5th at 2400 Zulu, it will become the following conditions. Again, we start out with wind speed and direction and then visibility. So the wind speed is two or the wind direction is 200. The G here stands for gusts, so it's in the direction of, of 200 degrees. It's wind that's 13 knots, gusting at 20 knots. Following that is the visibility, which is four statute miles. Then again, you have a specific weather condition. It's telling you the SH means that there are showers. RA means that there's rain. Then you're getting the cloud description again. There's an overcast layer at 0 to 0, which is 2,000 feet because they drop off the last two zeros. Then PROB 40 means that there's a probability of 40% that the following conditions will apply. And those following conditions will apply starting at midnight on the 6th, going to 600 Zulu on the 6th, and you're going to have two statute miles of visibility. Then after that, it's describing a specific weather pattern or, or event. And here the TS stands for thunderstorms. The RA, again, just like before, stands for rain. Then you're dealing with the clouds again. Overcast, OVC, 008 indicates that it's 800 feet because you drop off the last two zeros. Since there's no zeros behind it, it's 800 feet. The CB is an indication that the clouds will be cumulonimbus clouds, which are typically associated with thunderstorms, so that's something to, to know about. Then we're going back to another time period again, becoming on the 6th at 600 Zulu to the 6th at 800 Zulu, it will become the following conditions. Again, we're starting out with the wind direction and speed. The wind direction is at 120 at 15 knots. You have greater than six statute miles of visibility. And then we're moving on to the clouds. The clouds, are, there's an indication that it is scattered at 4,000 feet. Again, we drop off those last two zeros and we know that it's 4,000. The equal sign at the end is really just an indication that that's the end of the TAF for KOKC. Typically when TAFs are put together, there's multiple airports together at once or station identifiers together at once. And so this is just a way to differentiate the end of one from the beginning of the next one. I know that this is a lot to process and I know some of the abbreviations don't make much sense. I have a link in the description to an article that I wrote. It talks all about how to break down METARs and TAFs, and there's actually a link in there that goes to, it gives you all of the abbreviations you could ever run into, into in a METAR and TAF. So if you just walk through this, meet, this TAF or another METAR, you can actually walk through with that set of guidelines open, and you should be able to uh, decipher anything. There's also a bunch of tools online that you can cut and paste a METAR or a TAF onto the, a website and you can actually, it'll give you the reading of what the METAR or TAF is. That's another great way to test yourself. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the question. And the question here, we were looking at a specific time period. All three of the answers all dealt with 2200 Zulu to 2400 Zulu. So I've gone ahead and I've circled the portion at the top that deals with 2200 Zulu to 2400 Zulu. Remember, where it says becoming 0522, that means becoming at, starting at the period of the 5th at 2200 Zulu from the, to the 5th at 2400 Zulu. That's exactly the period we're looking at. We're going to start at the bottom. 
and use a process of elimination to go through each of the answers. The last answer says that there's an overcast layer at 200 feet. Well, if we go to the end of this, this section that deals with the right time period, it says OVC020. Well, we know that you drop off the last two zeros, so that says that there's an overcast layer at 2,000 feet. So we know that that third answer is wrong. It's also wrong because the only place we see that this TAF talks about a probability of 40% is actually for the next time period. So if you go down to the third line, it says prob 40 at, starting at the 6th at midnight. That's what that's saying is that there's a probability of 40% of those following conditions. So those are two reasons that that third answer is incorrect. The second answer also says that there's a, an overcast layer at 200 feet. So again, we can mark that one out for the same reason. This doesn't say that there's an overcast layer at 200 feet, but it also doesn't say that there, it will become an overcast layer at 400 feet. So those are the two reasons that I would mark out the second question. That is not an accurate answer. So then we know that that first answer is correct. And like I've been saying all along, that's what OVC 020 means, overcast layer at 2,000 feet. You knock off those last two zeros. And so that's the correct answer. If you found this video helpful at all, uh, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Uh, give me a like on the video and let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more videos like this or if there are specific topics you'd like to see me cover.